I'm sure you've noticed the recent explosion in code camps and courses that make it seem like programming is really easy and you'll be writing code in three or six months. That may be true. You probably will be writing some functional code in about a week or so. But I've also noticed a recent stream of new programmers that don't know what they don't know. And they are, well, to put it frankly, a bit arrogant, especially when they complete a boot camp and they think they don't need to learn anything else. I've been coding for a long time and the reality is that Programming is complicated. There are times that it feels easy and you feel like you're progressing. And there are times when it's really hard and you feel like you really don't know anything. And you start questioning your skills and you start questioning your life choices. So in this video, I'll look at some things that make a programmer's learning path and progression not as straightforward as some may claim. If you ever read The Dip by Seth Godin, I like this little book. I'm not getting paid or anything, but. It's a nice little book, good little page turner. He talks of the path that you usually take when learning a new skill, any skill, not just programming. At first, it's exciting and interesting as you go from zero to novice. In this period, you're able to get quick feedback on what you're learning and the progression is fairly rapid. And the small wins that you're making make the whole experience interesting and they really keep you going and motivated. Then comes um, the dip. This is the long slog between beginner and mastery. This is where a lot of people fall off. In this stage, the feedback you get from what you're doing might not be so abundant or even straightforward. It becomes harder to make progress or even know if you're making any progress and things rapidly become more difficult. Like I said, the dip is where most people quit. This applies to programming too. And you can even argue that with programming, you will face not one, but many dips in the lifetime of your career. Since the field is so expansive and there's always new stuff to learn, like daily. If you're a programmer and you didn't learn anything in the last week, you probably don't exist. And you're not gonna let me know down below in the comments. Starting coding is fairly easy. At first, there's an abundance of material online. Most of the programming courses and books are meant to get you started in a technology. That's the easy part. Then when you're starting from scratch, everything you learn is new and your expertise and progress just skyrockets. You complete tutorials, build applications by following tutorials, which gives you the confidence that you can actually build things. And that's a good confidence to have. It'll keep you going. Then you try and build something on your own from scratch and you find you can hardly start the project let alone figure out how to go from nothing to completed project pictured in your mind after getting through the first obstacle of building something from scratch you might build more things by yourself and start feeling good about your skills until you work on your first brownfield project starting a project from scratch what is known as a greenfield project you might have heard that term might be as simple as you get to decide the architecture of the project and if you are working alone you will know the project inside and out since you will have written all the code but if you get hired as a software developer for a company you will rarely work work on a greenfield project, right? You'll most likely work on legacy code that is probably millions of lines of code, if not more, spanning multiple files. These are called brownfields <clears throat> because they probably have some shit to avoid. Um, <laughs> no, because the green grass has been trampled, of course. Yeah, sorry for the graphic imagery. The complexity of such a project will have increased enormously from what you're used to. As you progress as a developer, things get more complex. Ever seen the books titled something like Learn X in 21 Days? Yep. Now, can you learn a programming language in 21 days? Yes, you probably can. You can probably learn the syntax of a language in a short amount of time, but coding takes much more than knowing a language. You'll probably need to know how to work with a framework, how to work with a database, how to test, how to properly architect an application, and so on. And as you progress as a developer, it starts getting harder and harder to level up your skill. And there isn't really an abundance of advanced level learning material out there. At this stage, you mostly learn through experience and mentorship. If you work at a company that cares about code quality, you learn how to write better code through code reviews. You learn how to better architect your application for easy maintainability and scalability. And you learn how to use various design patterns that make the code better. You get a better grasp of various tools that help you be more productive. You learn how to write performant code and so on. So going from a beginner on your first job might take a year or six months or however long it takes you, but it may take years to become an expert at whatever technology you're working with. And you should expect that. Talk about being an expert. What does it mean really exactly when it comes to coding? How can you identify an expert from a non-expert? 
Before we proceed, let me just ask you this. When do you consider somebody to be a programmer? Put your answers down in the comments below. No, I'm actually curious. Are you a programmer when you write your first Hello World program? When you create a substantial project by yourself? Or are you a programmer the first time you get paid for writing code? Even if you've been working in the industry for a while and you can indeed call yourself a programmer, it's hard to know if you're improving or if your skills measure up to what? I don't know. Whatever criteria you're using to judge yourself. What identifies an advanced level developer anyway? Is it the number of years they spend developing? Hardly. I mean, look at me. I've spent a number of years developing and now I'm on YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. I still do development day to day. Just because you've been a developer for 13 years, though, doesn't necessarily mean you have advanced skills. If you haven't been progressing and learning new things, it's quite possible to stagnate in your skill. So what else could it be? Is it the position that somebody holds at a company that identifies them as an advanced as a developer? Hardly. If you have decent enough skills to not get fired, <laughs> you can go through promotions just because you've been there too long and the company has paid a lot into you and your development and they don't want to lose you. This is especially true for large companies or government. You can move on from a junior developer position to a senior developer without much increase in your development skills. You can also be promoted to a senior position, not because of your coding skills, but because of your leadership skills, which is also a good thing to have. But then you're not a programmer, you're more of a manager. What else could it be? Could it be the total compensation that identifies an advanced level developer? Nope. Pay does not necessarily equal value or skill level. There are all sorts of things that can influence a developer's pay that have nothing to do with their skills. You can be better at negotiating and have negotiated a better salary than another developer in the same position. I've done this myself. And if you're curious to see videos about that, let me know in the comments down below. Your location also matters. A Google developer in San Francisco makes more than one in the same position in Austin or Melbourne. You can also level up your pay more quickly by switching jobs every few years. You usually get a higher percentage increase by switching companies than by getting promoted at the same company. If you are a decent developer, you can even go far by getting good at interviewing and switching jobs without necessarily leveling up your skills. And the company you work for also determines your pay. A small company with a handful of workers and a product that is highly profitable can afford to pay its employees above industry salaries. Progressing as a developer is not linear and skill level is hard to quantify. You can't just take a test that will grade you and identify the level you are at. If you come up with this test, you should definitely sell that idea to Google. Even companies hiring developers know it's hard to know if somebody will really be capable of the job, so they make the hiring process hard to weed out the false positives. If if you have the discipline to learn and master algorithms and system design, then you can probably figure out how to make that feature work. Whatever technology you're using, it's probably vast and forever changing, unless you're on COBOL or Fortran. And this makes it almost impossible for anyone to claim that they know everything there is to know about that technology. Take JavaScript, for instance. Its overall size is smaller to other languages like C++ and Java. You might think it's an easy language to learn, but as I mentioned earlier, knowing the syntax of a language doesn't really show mastery. JavaScript is actually a perfect example of this, what I'm talking about here. It's riddled with so many unexpected behaviors and has some <laughs> bad practices that it takes time to master its good parts and stay clear of the bad ones. If I do dare rub that cliche all over this video. Other than that, it takes time to pick up good design patterns. And since this is such a personal thing, you can never learn all the good design patterns that are out there. By the way, Java is still under development, active development, and there are tools and frameworks that keep getting developed that improve how it can be used. Here's my hot take. TypeScript is such a tool. Knowing how to code in JavaScript by itself is not that useful. To build an application, you need to know much more and work with other technologies in the surrounding ecosystem. You may need to know how to communicate with a database, how to present information in an interface, how to deploy the app, how to scale it, and so on. This is why companies hire specialized workers, because you can't expect a developer to know everything. Even the specialized developer doesn't know everything about the field, but is knowledgeable enough to be able to find solutions when they encounter problems. They know just enough to be dangerous. A lot of programming follows the 20-80 rule. You only need to know a small percentage of the technology to be useful, and the rest you will learn when there is need for it.
Even if you do achieve mastery or become an advanced developer, at some point you will be a beginner again. What does that mean? Well, as mentioned, our tech is forever changing. You can't learn a technology once and then stop improving your skills in it or stop learning new things, unless you wanna be weeded out in the industry in a few years. The field demands that you become a lifelong learner if you wanna stay in the game. So no matter your level now, you can be sure that you will be a beginner again at some point. You will keep facing the dip again and again throughout your programming career. But the good thing is that the process will become easier. First, you will have done it before, so you know that things get easier if you just stick with them and push through. It'll be easier not to quit. Then the language or technology you know might have similarities with what you're learning so that some of your previous knowledge will carry forward. And of course, when it comes to algorithms and design patterns, those will last you forever. So definitely learn those. Thanks for listening to my rant. I don't usually do this, but here you go. Tell me in the comments below if you consider yourself generally a beginner developer, an advanced developer, or whatever level you think you are. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.